A quick trigger warning, this video includes a discussion of the harsh treatment experienced by Africans during the transatlantic slave trade. This content is disturbing, so I encourage everyone to prepare themselves emotionally before proceeding. If you believe that this content will be traumatizing for you, I recommend you skip this video and watch some of our more lighthearted content on the channel. They were packed like sardines and that they died in their numbers. Those who died were thrown into the ocean for the fishes to eat them up. Boom! What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. If you wanna get the history of enslaved Africans and the slave castles here in Ghana, then this is the video for you. So today we're gonna go visit Cape Coast Castle. This is another one of those slave castles, the more well-known of the castles that are here. You'll get a chance to see an old school healer, religious, sort of a religious ceremony, see everything that went on at the time of enslaved Africans staying and living in this slave castle. You even get the history of the slave castle, how it started with creating goods like sugar and gold and all those kinds of things for trading. And then eventually they put human beings in the same places that they put those goods in as the new uh, items for trading. It's really powerful, I will say. It struck a chord with me having been there in person. And so if you haven't been, you have to come and see it. This is where you'll see the point of no return, where everybody of course came back to for the year of return and that was the full circle moment. So guys, check out this video if you really wanna know more about what happened to your ancestors before coming to the United States. What's up guys, so now we're at Cape Coast Castle. We were at St. George's Castle first. Now we're at Cape Coast Castle. St. George's Castle was the Portuguese, then the Dutch, then eventually the British. This is Cape Coast Castle, which has always been the British. This is the castle that I actually went to last year and I got a tour of. And the St. George's Castle I hadn't seen yet. So now we're about to get a tour on my second tour of the Cape Coast Castle. We actually have the same tour guide that I had last year. So I'll be able to compare last year to this year and maybe pick up on some more things because, you know, obviously the first time it's really heavy, it's hard to catch everything. And it was really packed last year. This year due to COVID, there's nobody around. It's pretty empty. I think we'll be able to get a pretty good tour, ask a lot of good questions and get a lot of good information. So stay tuned. We have the Elimina Castle built by the Portuguese around 1482. We also have the Christian Ball Castle in Accra, built by the Dutch in 1661. And then Cape Coast Castle and Dungeons, this very castle built by the English around 1665. In the whole of West Africa, Europeans built about 66 forts and castles. Out of the 66 forts and castles, Ghana had about 46 because of gold. Gold attracted Europeans to this part of the world. And this castle was built by the English at the point when transatlantic slave trade was at its peak. And that captives were captured not only from present day Ghana, but including present day Burkina Faso, Togo, Benin, Nigeria, Mali, Senegal, Gambia, and other neighboring West African countries. From wherever they were captured, they walked barefooted through the forest to a community called Asun Mansun. Over there, there is a river called Slave River. That was where they took their last African bath. From there, they walked into the castle. Here in the castle, the first part of call was the Palava Hall. Yeah, we are now in the Mel Captive Dungeon. And the Mel Captive Dungeon has five chambers. This is the first chamber. We will soon go through the rest of the chambers. And the five chambers were designed for 1,000 men at a time, which means that 200 men in each of the chambers at a time. So 200 men will be in here, for a minimum period of two weeks and a maximum period of three months of vacation. Indeed, this place was a complete apartment. They were fed in here. They defecated here, they slept here, they did everything here. At the time, there wasn't any electricity in the country. For that reason, the host up there served as a source of light and ventilation. The trenches here served as drainage system. When it rained, water passed through the holes to wash their faces, fuel, vomit, leftover food among other materials into the ocean. And so you can imagine the offensive smell here at a time. You can imagine the mosquitoes here at a time. You can imagine the house flies here at a time, diseases. We know that the heat in urine alone is enough to kill. We generate electricity from our own feces. But innocent souls lived in here for such a longer period and that they died 
in their numbers. Indeed, millions of people died over here. In 1972-1973, a group of archaeologists from the University of Ghana, Legon, they came in to excavate this chamber. They discovered that the chamber was made of feces, urine, vomit, leftover food, among other materials. So the entire floor was covered with these materials up to this level. There are samples of their feces on the wall that suggest that yes, they lived in their feces. It is important to recognize that Europeans came to the Gold Coast as traders and then also as missionaries. As the Portuguese were the first European nation to have come to the Gold Coast, they came around 1471. They brought as the first church. That was the Roman Catholic Church. And so, Roman Catholic Church was established in the courtyard of the Elmina Castle. Interestingly, around 1637, Dutch took over the Elmina Castle. So, Dutch converted the Portuguese church into a slave market. The British brought as the first English church, Church of England, which changed the name to Anglican Church. So Anglican Church was established right on top of this chamber. It started around 1752. Now this is one of the 77 shrines in Cape Coast. Before the arrival of the Europeans, Africans used to worship the Almighty God, Chidam Poyampopon, the Supreme Being, through natural things, such as rocks, rivers, mountains, trees, among other objects. So at the time, there was a very big rock occupying this piece of land. A ritual was performed. Part of the rock was removed from here to town. Up there, there's a commercial bank. They used to go to that site to worship instead of here. But after the trade had been abolished, another ritual was performed and it was brought back to its original place. That is why it is here. <laughs> We need the Almighty God. We cannot do without Him. Yeah. He tasted it. That means that it is not harmful. He called on the ancestors, the gods of the land, and the Supreme Being to protect you in everything that you do. Source of water for the captives. Indeed, at a time there wasn't any pipe from water in the country. It was harvested rainwater, harvested from the roof. Today, we've connected five pond water into it. And so we use this water for painting and other renovation work in the castle. It is 18 feet deep, five feet wide. Four of them swing here to the system or reservoir. And these are cannons. We have cannon balls there for the fish. The Portuguese were here, Swedish were here, Danish were here, Dutch were here before the English. So the English built the castle in 1665. The castle was built over a period of 300 years. And the English did not come along with their wives. For that reason, they depended on the female captives for sexual services. They raped the women. Those women who resisted the officers' rape were given some severe lashes. After giving them some lashes, they brought them in. They locked them up. Food and water was given to them through the small window. They created a hole here in order for them to defecate here and then also to urinate here to serve as a deterrent for others. Punishment cell for the female captives. In terms of numbers, depending on the number that resisted the officer's real there could be 20 or more or less at a time. That's where they defecated. This is where they stayed if they resisted rape. There was an entrance here. Officers stood here. They selected some of the women, took them up, and forced them for sexual services. Some of the officers went to town, they got married to some of the women there, they had children with them. Should you go to the Alimina Castle, you see the original girl of Mary Yes. This town was enlarged because this place became the seat of government. Here in Ghana, Cape Coast was the capital town, but the governor's seat was relocated to Accra on the 19th of March, 1877, because of political and economic reasons. To the Caribbean island, to the West Indies, they were not expected to come back to Africa. They lost their identity. Properties that they had in Africa, they lost everything. They lost contact with family members. Today, we are using the same door of my return. However, you are assured that we shall return. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
That side was the arrival and departure launch for the officers. Again, the ships could not come to this part of the shore because this part is shallow. So they used smaller boats to convey them and then transferred them onto the ships. They were packed like sardines and that they died in their numbers. Those who died were thrown into the ocean for the fishes to eat them up. They spent about a month to three before getting to the new world. In 1998, 22 years ago, Ghana celebrated the first Emancipation Day, Freedom Day to commemorate the end of slave trade. They were exhumed from Jamaica and then New York. Here in the castle, a ceremony was performed. After that ceremony, they were taken back to our cinemas where they took their last African bath for real burial. And whenever you go to the cinemas slave leave market, you will see those graves over there. Some were Carson's grave and then Madame Crystal's grave. A cinema is on the Cape Coast Kumasi Highway. So about 45 minutes drive from here, depending on how fast you drive. Now their homecoming is symbolic. It is to break the idea of no return so that Africans in the diaspora can come back to pay homage to their ancestors. So the door of no return has been reversed, the door of return, just as you see up there. Oh, okay. So on that score, we can now return. There are some of the captives made an attempt of fighting for their freedom. Some made an attempt of escaping. Those who made such an attempt were caught and were condemned in jail. No water. No source of ventilation, no food, no light. Through suffocation and starvation, they struggled and died. As they died, they were thrown into the sea for the fishes to eat them up. Three dogs, two have been removed, the only one left. And here the one, one dog left, left with the leads in here. Malaba is a Portuguese word, it means to bargain or to negotiate, to talk. So as the captives were marched down to the castle, here was the first part of home. You know, trade is always between two parties. One party makes a demand. Another party of collapse. There was more like a collaborative relationship between the European merchants and some African traditional rulers and wealthy men. And so some African traditional rulers served as medium. They went out there and brought the captives. Most of the captives were gotten through in the driver walls. These walls were spearheaded by some African traditional rulers. Heavy debtors were enslaved, orphans were enslaved, wrongdoers in society were also enslaved. Important meetings were held over here. Therefore, the history of Ghana and then also the history of the transatlantic slave trade cannot be complete without talking about this whole because the whole played a major role in the history of Ghana as well as the transatlantic slave trade. The first Anglican church built in this country, 1865. George McLean established the first court of justice in the country around 1840. That was a decade after the abolition of the slave trade. The former judicial service in the country started in this hall. Original design of materials have been changed. Governor's bedroom many, many years ago. One governor lived here at the time. Look at the differences between this place and the dining room. Think mm. about it. And you might have heard so much as far as the subject matter is concerned. You might have read a lot of literature. You might have watched a lot of serious documentaries movies. You might have even specialized in history. But having gone through the dungeons, having come here, let's reflect on the subject matter once again. Governor's reception area. Yes, they used to entertain themselves right here. They used to take their snacks here. Look at the space. Look at the number of windows here. Compare the situation here with the situation down there. Think about it. So this was the church, Church of England, which changed name to Anglican Church. The Anglican Church is not children's library. The Methodist Church started in the fourth year. So church here have to use down there. Forced labor, forced marriages, mental or psychological slavery, political slavery, religious slavery, voluntary slavery, and so on. Now addressing these forms of slavery call for multi-stakeholder approach. Individuals have a role to play in this exercise. Governments across the globe have a role to play. Civil society groups have a role to play. Media has a role to play. Business owners have a role to play. The academic community has a role to play. I think and I believe that as individuals, wherever we find ourselves, regardless of our race, regardless of our skin color, regardless of our religious affiliation, regardless of our political affiliation, let us see ourselves as one people created by the same creator. No matter what, so far as we are human beings, somebody will serve the other. But then somebody serving you doesn't mean that you should treat a person as a slave. Let's respect one another. Whatever resources that God has given to each of us, let's value it and be self reliant. Let us be transformed by the renewal of our mind. Because until we change the way we think, some of us will forever be in chains as slaves. Let's educate ourselves. Having gone through the dungeons doesn't mean that we should begin to hate one another. The truism is that hating one another will solve the problem. Shifting blames on others wouldn't solve the problem. 
But let's come together and fight against living in our society because together we stand divided and reform. Hey guys, so as previously mentioned, this is the second of the two lathe castles that we went to. This one was built much later, right? This one was built after the transatlantic slave trade had already begun. Very different circumstances, but still very, very poor living environments, if you could even call it that, for the enslaved Africans. So, you know, this was enlightening because here, Kofi Iso, our guide, mentioned that there were over 60 million Africans that were enslaved. But in terms of the number of Africans that actually made it to the Americas, it was about 12 million. So you see the conditions in which the Africans were kept in, right? Our ancestors, the, the conditions that they were kept in, which obviously led to all kinds of disease and death and horrible death, basically, 48 million Africans died through this process really puts into perspective how cruel this process was. What we've gotten in the U.S. is kind of what happened once the enslaved people got to the U.S. Think about all the trauma that happened on the continent before they even got on those boats and died on those boats or you know, basically even anyone who survived on those boats before even getting to the United States. And so this to me is really powerful. I think it's important to share these kinds of stories. Go ahead and, and comment below if you knew any of these stories already or if any of this is new to you. We wanna make sure that we are, are sharing this information with the world and make sure you share this with anybody who you know who doesn't know about this history and who could use some further insight into this. All right guys, see you on the next video.